Hey everybody, James Balsano here, and you're watching Without Your Head! Here we are at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil. That would make me terrible, Troy. Mm -hmm. And we're joined on the very first live Facebook. I don't even know what to call it. Let's just call it a video cast instead of making up some stupid name. James Balsamo. And I think that's a very fitting person to have here on the very first live video one. Absolutely. Hey, everybody, I'm here to pop this cherry. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a sweet shirt on, and we didn't plan it that way. We did not plan this. No. It's a killer way. It's kind of night. Yeah. There's it's cool because cool we don't totally match, and it'd be like, what are you doing wearing the same exact shirt, but it's in right. the same vicinity. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. It's going to be a – but, yeah, I like that shirt. Well, thank you very much. But you have a new one out now, a new movie. I do Killer Waves too. With, uh, oh, we're talking about Catch of the Day. I thought it was Catch, uh, yeah, I was, I was confused. I was like, maybe I watched the wrong one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Catch of the Day 2 is the one that's uh, out, comes out in stores everywhere uh, next month on the 9th. So uh, that's got the amazing Kreskin in it. Mm -hmm. James oh, very Roberts. good. Yep. Yes, which uh, I don't want to spoil the movie, but I'm a big fan of, of the Snake Gun. Yeah. Snake I Man. Need, yeah, I need, to get, I need to get one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Jake the Snake's back on wrestling TV. So, it's oh yeah. Oh really? He's wrestling. Yeah, he's, yeah. Well, he's not wrestling, but he's managing in, in AEW. Oh nice. He's a manager. That's cool. Yeah. He, had the snake? he does. He did. He had the snake. He put it on a guy's wife. He kind of wow. dry humped her in the ring a few weeks ago. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, that Jake. <laughs> But yeah, yeah that was kind of creepy. That was kind of a cool moment. It was a very cool moment. Yeah. yeah. Bushwhacker Luke's in it too. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't lick anyone because you can't you can't get away with that anymore. But, but it's very <laughs> yeah. cool to see the bushwhacker. <laughs> and uh, John Amplis from Free Shows in the movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. And, uh, Mike Christopher for Dawn of the Dead is in it. And uh, I met Bill Wheaton for you, Neil. And Bill yes. I was Bill Ween's amazing in the movie, yeah. and uh, uh, I don't want to spoil the movie, but uh, I did not know this about Bill. If this is this this is a true uh, act, he can perform. He's got a secret talent. He does. Yeah. Which I did see Bill naked in in uh, pro I, maybe that's a spoiler for my other for my movie, but I did get to see <laughs> Bill naked, which I didn't expect th that I would I would get to see. It was very, it was very, it was that was the reason though. you made that movie, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I'm not. I don't want to say that. I'm, oh, like, right. I'm not it's like right. Weinstein or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Bill's great. Uh, how long does it take you to like uh, make one of your movies? Uh, it, you know, I guess it's a, each one different. Yeah, it's a, it takes about uh, three months, start to finish. I think of a wacky idea, I start shooting it, and then I cut it, and then my distributor takes a month. Put it into Walmart, Best Buy, Barnes and Noble. So three months usually. Yeah, you always have great, uh, great uh, covers. Mm -hmm. yes. Art, which I mean, you go know, back to. I mean, all of us remember going to the to the store to rent movies, and that's what you'd would catch your eye is a cool uh, cover. And yeah, I still think that like the Corman ones, or like um, you know the oh. Charles Band ones. Uh, what was yeah. his company? Full Moon. Yeah, Full Moon. Yeah, and even you know, even if today there's not the rental store, you still the first thing you see is the visual of the cover. Either if you're renting it on uh, online or if you're at the store and you see it. Yeah, I know it. Uh, it's it's interesting because when I started doing the uh, the old school drawn covers as a throwback, not a lot of filmmakers were doing it, and it's nice in the uh, last 10 years since I've been making films, they've started to come back heavily. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You see that a lot. You're right. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Cause some of the people I know from like festivals, they'll have what I think a really cool cover art and then like they'll get distributed. I won't mention some of the distributors, but they'll always change it to something that I think just looks very generic. Like that you see everywhere else where I think the, the, the old kind of the old school, either drawn or painted stuff it, to me yeah. stands out way more. Yeah. Even though you did a great cover for me for the Lich. Yeah, I can't draw, or else I would have uh, yeah. drawn it. Yeah. But, yeah. 
Yeah, that was that was cool. I'm glad I'm glad you liked it. I know it took a little while, but I was very sick at that time. I was sicker than I realized. And so I, I would be in pain when I. So yeah, I was in pain for you. I'd sit down and start to do a Photoshop. That's how I demand all my art. Right now, it makes it even better for my art. That's how that works. Yeah, and I had a lot of fun being in a James Ball Solomon movie. Yeah, yeah, you're great in that uh, cool cell too. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my theme. best work. Yes. Yeah. I love that too. <laughs> yeah, you're you're greater than too, Troy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, it's he's used to it. He's always making fun of me. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that comes naturally. For the last forty four years. Yeah, if you haven't seen Cool as Hell too, let me give you a little spoiler for this scene. Uh, Neil hears if he picks a magical leaf, it'll give him a ten inch penis, mm-hmm. and uh, his friends set him up that uh, the Krampus monster will sacrifice Neil and they all get 10 inch penises, including Troy. Yeah. And there was much rejoicing right. after that. Much, and it, much if, rejoicing. and if it was the real me, I'd just be like, well, why do I want it smaller? Like, oh, yeah, it's cheaper people. than a reduction. You don't want to scare people. Right. Yeah. Well, according to science, you gain an inch of a uh, penis length for every 30 to 35 pounds you lose. And, Wow. I've lost over 150 pounds, so you know you do the math out there. <laughs> it's interesting, and it's a you know I'm not a science denier, so I don't want to. Right. Uh, uh, Gary the Con- yeah Gary the Conqueror is also in the movie. He is Gary's great in the movie. He's got three little segments in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where did you meet him? Because I assume you know a lot of the people you 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 meet at uh, the conventions. I do. Actually, uh, there's a Canadian actor that I work with, Sean Duchette, who uh, brought in Gary. So that was cool. Sean's in Cool as Hell, too. He's the guy with the chainsaw and the convertible that cuts off the guy's wiener. <laughs> yeah, uh, the movie, though, like uh, it opens with like this awesome uh, shootout. And I was like, this is this is like really well done. It's really fun. <laughs> And I don't be surp- I don't want to act like I'm surprised. This is well done, but no, it's it's very cool. And uh, was that fun to shoot? And I assume that would take a long time uh, in post. Yeah, it, it, it didn't take that long. There's a, a funeral home that I've been filming at for the last couple of years. It's where Curly from the Three Stooges is buried. Uh, it's called the Home of Peace in Whittier, Los Angeles. And so we, I think we were only there four hours. Four hours, and we got that whole scene done. And then we got the snake gun scene done there also. So, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask where it was because I thought maybe it was. Uh, what's the big? Um, but you're probably not allowed to film there. The big, uh, the big uh, funeral. Uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Cemetery. Yeah. The, uh, the Hollywood Forever. Yeah, Hollywood Forever. Uh, I think they do some filming there, but they do like, you know, Hollywood budget films there. So, yeah, okay. yeah. But uh, they also do Hollywood budget films at the Home of Peace Cemetery. I think they filmed uh, some Law and Order episodes there and some other stuff. So, yeah. are they cool with you filming there? Yeah, they're great. I mean, they're so sweet, and you know, we we have the most respect because people are buried there. Yeah, for yeah. Us, you know what I mean. Yeah. So we have to be like really respectful of the thing. Even though in, when we were filming the Lich, we had a pizza party there, so we had a zombie. <laughs> Like a bunch of people were in zombie makeup in the mausoleum uh-huh. eating pizza with actual deceased with, people. With the other was, actual like, zombies, but yeah, right. <laughs> they're just locked up. There's man, this sucks. Exactly. Get get us some pizza too. Right. Yeah. Even the undead love pizza. Who does? I mean, that is the that is the one thing. Like, uh, I don't really miss. Uh, I change my diet a lot, but I still have to eat pizza. Yeah, it's like the one thing I can't uh, yeah, not I have. have pizza. Yeah, I had some uh, vegan pizza out in L.A. and it was actually a lot better than I expected it to be. Oh yeah. The only thing is that the cheese is not quite the same. Yeah, I went uh, I went vegetarian for a few months and I uh, was eating vegan fairly often. Uh, you know, and Evan and I had a comic book store Zappers because Evan's vegan, mm-hmm. so I I like vegan food. It's great. Yeah, so, I do too. Especially um, if you're in a place like in L.A. where you can. Like it, here where I live, like if you were vegan, you'd just be able to get like a salad and right. and maybe like a side dish, like a side of corn or something. But you're probably not even most of the salads are vegan. They're loaded with like bacon and stuff. But, oh, yeah. But out there, there's almost everywhere you can get cool vegan food. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. 
And Eben's the only uh, vegan I know it's a little annoying about it. He'll be like yelling at me if I'm eating uh, <laughs> ribs or something. He yells because he cares. That's yeah, funny. no, I love Eben. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How long had how long have you known? I know you guys are buddies and have the uh, the store and stuff, but how long have you guys known each other? Uh, a few years. Did you meet through, through Mad Monster? I assume. Yeah, we met through Mad Monster. Yeah. I, I guess the store can't be open right now. No, I actually sold the store. So oh, you did? I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So Zappers is going to remain for conventions and uh, online stuff, but the physical store I sold to the guy that draws Roger from American Dad. Oh really? Yeah, I've not seen that show, which you probably right. know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know of it, The American Dead. Yeah, The American Dead. <laughs> well, that's too bad though, because uh, it seemed like you guys were we were having a lot of fun with that. But I know right now it's been bad. Oh yeah, yeah I actually sold it right before all this happened, so I I think it it worked out great. Yeah, because I can imagine us paying rent for you know, a comic book store that you can't, yeah. Essential store. <laughs> right. I think it's essential, but yeah. 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 The eyes of store. Idiots, but right, no. yeah, yeah. So I saw that you're filming now. I know you're, you're being uh, careful and everything, but you're, oh, you're yeah, uh, social distancing filming for uh, white school too. So that should be fantastic. Yes. You're going back to all the classic uh, James Balsamo movies. Yeah, well, I started I started doing this is the year of the sequel for me. So, you know, people like, I've done a bunch of films now, so people are like, oh, I like this one. I want to see more of this character. And so that's why I did Cool Cell 2 and then Catch of the Day 2. And Killer Waves 2 is going to be out soon. That one's got Marky Ramon from the Ramones in it. Yeah, and a very cool uh, a villain in Killer Waves. You know, a very cool look. Yeah, the unholy diver. Mm-hmm. And is uh is Rod one of your favorite characters to play? Yeah, Rod's a fun character. You know what I mean? As a cop, you know, there's like no rules. You could kind of get away with anything with that character. Yeah. You know, like I am the law. You know, <laughs> right? Is it is it the closest to the real James Balsamo? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so when people yell at me, I just go, "Hey, I'm famous." Yeah. Like, oh. You went. I almost forgot because you just moved the hat. That's one of my favorite scenes. Is you have the uh, a note to the all time classic arm wrestling film over the top where you, you oh, have yeah, the switch. Yeah. It's like a I'm switch. And, that, uh, <laughs> and I was like, hell the yeah! This arm wrestling scene. I could not put in an over the top reference. Right. I I reference that movie a lot when I used to wear b- baseball caps a lot, and yeah. usually no one would know what I was talking about. But uh, okay. I was like, I know <laughs> exactly great, what this is. Great yeah. Movie. It is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's on the top of arm wrestling movies for sure. And I know there, there's there's loads of them. But Yeah. Well, hopefully that scene will be recognized as one of them now. Right. Um, I'll like it anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else will be like, hey, look at those boobs and nice, uh, some women bent over. And I'm like, did you see when James Balsamo flipped his hat around? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I told it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotta have your yeah. priorities. Uh, right, right. Well, you know, everyone's into something, but there is a lot of boobs in the movie, too. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I always try to uh, have the best film I could make. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm an ass guy, so there was there's a lot of uh, ass in the movie, too, which I was happy yeah, about. Yeah, I got, I got another ass movie in the works. Uh, oh, really? Killer, yeah, Nightmare Party, Twerk of Terror. So... <laughs> I, I have Troy very approved. hot coffee. I don't want to burn myself. I'll yeah, see the ball somewhere. That's a slasher film, right? Yeah. So uh, Joe Castro's on his way. Uh, he might. He's going to try to catch a, uh, on the show and call in. But uh, okay. so what? What's Joe been like to work with? Because his uh, monster in your movie looks so cool. Oh yeah, Joe's incredible. Joe's uh, making a new monster for me right now. I can't. Oh adapt. really? Anything okay. what it is, but he just started to sculpt a few days ago. So oh, awesome! I'm excited about that. Yeah, Joe's insane. He's such a talented artist, and he's such a sweet guy. Yeah, and, he's super awesome. You know, he's also a filmmaker. He's such a talented filmmaker. So when you work with Joe on set, he really knows exactly what you want because he wants what's best for the picture. You know what I mean? So uh, he helped with uh, some of the scenes while I was acting. Helped, you know, really help the DP find the money shot as mm-hmm. it was. Yeah, the gore and stuff like that. So. And you can you could tell he has so much fun 
uh, making like, oh, he loves it. You know crazy what I mean? gore the, and just monsters. Just like me, Joe's passion is film and monsters. You know what I mean? So that's what's great about working with Joe. So he's going to be working on the uh, the werewolf for Hollywood werewolf. Oh, nice. Coming up. And uh, then he's doing another monster movie that I can't announce yet. So. Oh, okay. You've been working on the werewolf movie for a little while, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it like got off the ground a little bit and then just I took on so many other projects, it kind of got buried, but now I've been like cranking out films. Unfortunately, thanks to this quarantine, I've had some time to edit, but I've just been, I finished uh, two features in the last three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just released a movie, uh, it's called Sexy Time. It's a compilation of my breast clips. Oh, really? Ten different films that I've done, yeah. That, uh, that came out on Vimeo three days ago, so, and it'll hit stores next month. Mm-hmm. I I haven't actually seen any uh, uh, links for that one, or you know, like uh, you talking about that one. I haven't oh, even yeah. seen the cover. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's two girls making out. If I oh, I might have actually seen the cover now that you mention it. Yeah. Can you pull up a photo on here, or? Uh no. If you can, I don't know how. There's probably a way, but I have no idea what. What I don't know what I'm doing. It's a very professional show here. Okay. I could put it in post. But I really don't feel like doing oh, okay. that. But, but uh, yeah, if you, I don't, I don't know. Uh, hmm. uh, I'm seeing if nope, I don't think so. I'm not that complicated or fancy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but, but people can check it out. I'm sure it's on your uh, Facebook page and whatnot. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. Sexy time. Sexy time. I like the name. Yeah. It'll be the best movie you watch all day. All day. All day. That's high praise. Maybe you should go for like at least all week. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Then you work up your way to all year. Right. So do you really hate uh, Mr. Good Bar candy bars? I don't enjoy that candy bar, no. <laughs> You're not a fan of the nougat? I'm not a fan of the nougat. <laughs> <laughs> I much prefer a Reese's peanut butter cup. I do. I do prefer Any day of the week. So. Mm-hmm. So if anyone sees James at a uh, at a convention, don't bring him a Mr. Good Bar. Bring him yeah, a peanut butter I will cup. Suck it at an old woman. <laughs> there are a lot of old women at the convention. I miss conventions at the moment and festivals. And... Yeah, that's not going to happen for another year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be a long time. You know what I mean? So I. Uh... That's how I spend the better part of my year is touring the country. So now I'm, uh, I'm just making as much movies as I can while I'm, you know, grounded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What well, what are the current ones you're filming? Uh, well, I'm currently filming Hollywood Werewolf and Bite School, and uh, going the classic monster route, vampire uh, and werewolves. Yeah, and uh, it wants blood is in post, so. Uh, I think I have two more days of, of pickup shots for that, and then that's done. So, and this is not a knock on your other movies, but from what I see, uh, it wants blood is like a different style compared to your other movies. Yeah, well, it, you know, I shot it on a better camera. It shot on on eight K. You know what I mean? Which is crazy because most cinemas only handle four K. So it looks it looks beautiful, and uh, you know, Joe went all out with the big monster. And uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Just in time f- w- when movies can't play in theaters. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's a perfect time. But yeah. But no, that, that's cool. And yeah, the monsters are so awesome. I know we've talked about that before, but yeah. I mean, I grew up as a monster, you know, kid and, and adult. So seeing the big, cool monster is pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. The, uh, the Nadoto, as it's called, which is Swahili for nightmare. Hmm. Or at least ah. that's what Google says anyway. All right. I was just saying, how did this come about? Did you just know this? Yeah, no, I, uh, it was weird. It kind of, the whole thing just kind of fell into place with, I wanted to do something with an elephant. And then uh, the Grootslang is a real uh, African legend about a snake and an elephant combined. It was like the gods created this creature and it was too powerful. So, that's where the story comes from. It's based on an actual cryptic zoologist monster. And then I mutated that into 
So then a dojo. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I like it. Why elephant? Why did you like, uh, I want to do something elephant? Uh, I really wanted to ride an elephant in the first catch of the day. There was a nightmare food hallucin- hallucination scene of a Bollywood dance scene. And I really wanted to ride an elephant. And then that's how that whole thing kind of mutated. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't want to ride an elephant? Oh, yeah. 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 If, you get, if you get the chance. Yeah. I like there's a little animated uh, demon that's flying around in one scene in the movie. Yeah. So the, the animator that did the stop animation for It Wants Blood did that. That's for another movie that also got buried. It's called The Sword and the Stoner. That's something that's still <laughs> uh-huh. going to come out eventually so richard svensson he's the stop animator from sweden he's known as the lone animator and uh he did the demon in catch of the day too and he made this pot smoking dragon for the sword and stoner it's pretty cool so that'll come out eventually yeah who does the animations at the beginning because i know uh it was one of your other movies has the same uh, kind of opening yeah so i've been using uh rob yulfo for a few years he uh, he does uh, Trip Tank on Comedy Central, and uh, that Trump cartoon on Showtime. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he animates for that also. So Rob's a great, great guy. I've been working with Rob for almost a decade. I'm just posting here if people would like to zoom in. I know uh, the Kaufmans might zoom in. So yeah. Post the link here if people would like to do so. So okay. bear with me while. I just totally stopped the show and start posting a link. I need like I need like a, an assistant that can post links for me. Yeah, you need well, you need a Renfield man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I I call him <laughs> That's what Troy should be doing. Uh, I should be. I should be a Renfield. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. What is what are like some of your favorite uh, monster movies that get you into uh, movies? To be uh, Q, the Winged Serpent. Larry Cohen. Fantastic movie. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The the stuff. Also, Larry Cohen. I love Larry Cohen. Two of my favorite movies, honestly. Not yeah. just because you said those. But. Yeah, yeah. They're great. You know, uh, I really like uh, The Creature That Challenged the World. Old oh, yeah. Corman. And uh, a lot of those old Corman movies. You know I mean? It came from hell. The tree monster. Thing. You can see I have the stuff on this hat here. Oh, yeah. My hand-painted hat. Chocolate chip cop Charlie there. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. So most people don't know who this is supposed to be. I don't know. Have you ever had an Egyptian feast? Oh, cool. That's great. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, that's who I always suggest to Eben. Like people will say, like, you know, bring in like all these names everyone knows. And I'm like, bring in Fouad yeah. Ramses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And everybody else is like, ooh, but I'm yeah. like, it would be awesome for me. I don't, I don't really care about anybody else. But you, you know what threw me off about that is the gray isn't combed in enough. Mm, that's true. Fake gray hair. I love that. <laughs> that yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. And the music. And that, that movie's uh, tremendous. Oh yeah. And like Thank the uh, the black tape eyebrows too. Yeah, and the one light in the beach scene. Oh yeah. 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 And the whip. I mean, the, the, the oh, she's bleeding through the on the dress, which is <laughs> Herschel fantastic. Gordon was genius. You know the story of the cow tongue? It was uh, sort of, but yeah. So Herschel Gordon Lewis got that girl to put a real cow tongue. Oh in yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. Sweet. Did you ever have Herschel in? Uh, did he ever have a cameo on anything? Yeah, he's in Bite School. He plays my grandfather. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. Yeah. He was a. Uh, I, I regret we weren't recording video uh, the last time we had him on a couple times, and uh, the last time he was on, he was he thought we were doing video and we were doing Skype, so he's on video, and he's he was like a three piece suit, and he's like, oh, so it's not video, and I'm like, no, it's just just a show, and so he's like, well, can I get comfortable, and I'm like, yeah, that's fine, and so he reached up and like loosened his tie like an eighth of an inch, <laughs> and that was it, and I was like, oh, okay, and was, now yeah. he's very comfortable. Yeah, that's as comfortable as he gets. Yeah, old school class. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the, for me, it's the best uh, commentary tracks. Like even movies I might not even want to watch, I'll watch uh, and just listen to his commentary. Right. 
like uh, I'm not really into some of like the biker movies and stuff, but I like I like to watch him just to hear his, his commentary. Oh yeah, Genius. and by the end, no matter what the movie did, what the movie is, you'll think like, oh my god, he must have made like Gone with the Wind or something. This the way he bragged it up, like it's freaking tremendous. Yeah, sweet, sweet man. Yeah, he's so awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, he was on uh, either our first or second year, like you know. Uh, like those kind of people are special because it's like we might just well we kind of are just a bunch of goose but you know he didn't know if anyone's gonna listen to this or not and, you know he did the show and I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool yeah now i was gonna i was really happy to see joel reed too uh huge i'm a huge fan of joel reed uh yeah. and uh really sad you know he passed away obviously and, yeah that one still hurts that's sorry for me to even talk about that one that one mm-hmm. was sad yeah i agree uh, I talked to him, you know, uh, often. I'm in the documentary here, Read Unbound, uh-huh. which is, it's yeah. all right. I like the documentary, but I don't think a lot of people in the documentary get Joel Reed. I think they yeah. took him uh, too seriously as like, I think people take everything he said, like literally where I think a lot of it, it was, he was messing around with it. Yeah. So uh, I, I went to his apartment a few times and the last time I went there, you know, he dropped the act. He dropped the, uh, you know, fetuses from Brazil and baby pussy and all the crazy <laughs> shit he used to say. And, you know, he really talked to me as a filmmaker. You know what I mean? He was like, James, you're a smart businessman. And he completely dropped the crazy thing. You know, he's like, I see you posting out there. You know, you're doing the right thing. And I, it was a real heartfelt moment. You know what I mean? He He shut off the switch of... Ah, I'm crazy. You know what I mean? yeah. like, that's when I realized, like, wow, he's brilliant. You know, he puts on this whole show, mm-hmm. but he's a businessman. You know, he's a smart guy and sweet and genuine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah really supportive. Just the not. I'm glad you okay, said that though, because uh, I think I think a lot of people don't really get him. They thought like the like you said the act the uh, was like serious was the real guy. Right, yeah, kind of like uh, if you met you and and you're doing you know kind of the over the top stuff like oh man that guy's you know whacked or <laughs> like obviously you're not in that twenty four seven yeah yeah no, no that that does happen to me which I think is interesting you know what I mean I walk into a room and if I'm not telling jokes and people are like are you okay what's it <laughs> oh they expect you to be crazy all the time yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could I could uh, imagine that would, that would probably get annoying, I guess, because it's no, almost like one, two, three, be funny or something. It's just interesting that people think that some characters of a performance is that person, right? All the time, you know what I mean? Which yeah. is true, you know. You, you know me, yeah. you, you know I'm a silly guy. You know I like to make sure. jokes, but I yeah. don't. I you know sometimes you got to go take a pee. <laughs> 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 right. We'll, we'll allow it. Throw me a bone here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, it's very, very cute. What, what is that? Is it a little skull? Yeah, that's a little skull word. All right. I like yeah, it. I'm trying to get a little head. Hey. <laughs> well, there this is go. without your head. Apparently. <laughs> right. There it is. Unfortunately. <laughs> but we don't want to get kicked off of, of Facebook here if we're having too much head. <laughs> Plus, it's three dudes. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but. So, uh, what do you have uh, for merchandise? I know you got the cool shirts. So I know you can't be at the at the convention selling them. Do you, can you get those online? You can. Acidbathproductions.com. I got t-shirts, movies, VHSs, all your wacky James Balsamo needs. Acidbathproductions.com. Mm-hmm. I know I've asked this before, but where did Acid Bath Productions, where did that name come from? Uh, so, it came from Beyond the Darkness. It's uh, Great old school. Oh, this was like, like a really deep answer. You're like, yeah, yeah. Beyond horror. the darkness of my mind. Yeah, yeah. So it was about it was about an ancestral brother and sister, and uh, the sister would get jealous. If the guy slept with other girls and would put them in an acid bath. <laughs> Does not seem like a good time, but yeah, it's a great watch though. I've not seen that. I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really great. Yeah. So, was uh, it the movie or just the idea of an acid bath that like it was the idea? Of a, it was well, it was that movie was the idea for the acid bath. So I was making short films under Tortured Soul Productions, 
And uh, I had a girlfriend at the time that was like, that name's dumb. You shouldn't change it. So that's how that came to be. Yeah. I saw that movie and then I was like, oh, Acid Bath. So it was Acid Bath Pictures. And then this girl that drew the animation actually wrote productions instead of pictures. You know, the cartoon in the beginning where the girl comes yeah. out with Acid Bath. So she wrote it wrong. It was Acid Bath Pictures. And she wrote productions, and it was too cool to change. So, that's yeah, no, it's, it totally fits. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much of a hassle to go back yeah, exactly. and change that for you. And uh, can you and drawn, so. Oh yeah. yeah. Can you uh, can you watch any of your shorts? Those old shorts. Yeah, so I released a movie uh, last year called Mind Melters. It's got over thirty of my short films before I made a feature film. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on a sequel to that now because I had so many short films. Yeah. Do some of those, uh, cause you said like, uh, like the, the little demon animation, you know, was for something else that didn't happen. But does that happen sometimes? Like either make a little short for something All or and like, I'll use it here in this movie or something. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like when you make a, uh, a soup, you just got to put in everything, you know, you take the bones and it, it's all good somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Cut off a little piece, the dog will eat it or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. We so, saw the dog earlier. What is the name of the dog? That's Alf. Alf. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a perfect cool. name. Yeah, yeah. Alf the pizza dog. He loves pizza. He's a very smart dog. The pizza pup, if you will. Pizza pup. I like it. He's made appearances in several of the movies. Yeah, he's in uh, The Lich and Catch of the Day, too. So uh, Hanukkah, the last time I saw you, no, no, I saw you in person in February. Yes, you did. But uh, before that, I saw you in uh, in December, uh -huh. and and you looked at me. You're like, "What are you doing here?" Not like me. And you're just uh, you're you're surprised because you I was surprised because you don't live in Los Angeles. I was right. like, "What are you doing in my neck of the woods?" Yeah, he's like, "Get the hell out of here!" You know. <laughs> but it was cool. So how did you get involved in Hanukkah? Uh, I got involved in Hanukkah a little bit before it got off the ground and then I got off of the project and then they started shooting for two weeks and then they asked me to come back and help them do the rest of the movie. So I was the DP for most of the film and I did some effects makeup work and some editing and some acting and some grip work. <laughs> I did a little bit of everything. Brickwork? Is it you say brickwork? Grip. Oh work. grip. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know these terms. Sure. I was asked to be uh, when I was out there for I was doing the movie and uh, one of the things they asked me was if I could do the BTS footage. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, of course. I had no idea what that meant. Right. So, so afterwards I was like, oh, I better Google this to see what the hell I, I got myself <laughs> into. Right. BDSM, yeah. yeah, I could do that. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, behind the scenes? I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I was glad that's what it meant. It wasn't something horrific or something. Right. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The cancel is... Yeah, it was, it was really cool. You know, uh, I'm the last person to actually have ever filmed Nick Miller. Cause oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, Dick Miller passed and Sid passed. So I didn't shoot Sid's scene, but uh, Sid did take me out to lunch after the wig fitting, which was really cool. So we had a nice one-on-one -on -one lunch. He was telling me stories about his life. And, you know, Sid did you know Sid uh, like before that? I did. I knew Sid almost 10 years. Uh, we had done a bunch of conventions together and had some breakfasts, breakfasts <laughs> over the years, you know, together. So it was cool. It was cool yeah. to finally work with Sid. Yeah. And that, that's a guy that, uh, that's such a huge blow to the conventions because I can't imagine uh, the convention scene now without Sid Haig. Yeah, I know. It's tragic. Dick Miller and Sid, you know what I mean? It's yeah, Dick Miller's man. Jim, yeah. yeah. He never he would never do an interview with me, but uh, but I like Dick Miller. <laughs> yeah. He would say, I asked him, and he'd always say, no, but I love you, hat man. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was uh, I think it was one uh, one convention in L.A. and we were like across the you know we had seats uh, their booths were across and he's like he's like I'm gonna ask him to move me so I don't have to look at you all weekend yeah like, whoa and he's like oh I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but 
But yeah, Sid's awesome. And uh, it's weird when you hear stories with Sid. Like if you, like I said, because I had dinner with him one night. And uh, like he'll tell stories from like being in like TV shows in like the 60s, like, you know, yeah. playing cowboys. And then you think of like all these things that the man's done. Yeah, he told me a story. He was at uh, a gentleman's club in the Philippines, you know, after filming a movie and some girl wanted to dance with him. And so he's dancing with this girl and the guy comes up to him and he's like, hey, that's my girl. And he pulls a knife on Sid. Sid oh. says he knocked the knife out of the guy's hand and he punches him in the face and falls to the ground. And then he was with the film crew. So the crew grabbed the other guy and they threw him in a taxi. I mean, <laughs> that was the end of that guy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when he was telling me the story, though, he was like, he's getting to he was it, yeah. it. You know what I mean? I love telling that, you know, when you direct someone and you're like, all right, I want you to see it. I love that moment where the person relives the moment. Uh-huh. Like he was really remembering that, that punch in the face. Like, <laughs> it got that guy good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Did you ever have Dick Miller? Uh, was he ever a cameo? Uh, no, I only filmed him for Hanukkah. Yeah. So what was that? What was the premiere of Hanukkah like for you? Oh, it was great. Um, I was in a menorah blue suit. It had like dreidels and, uh, you know. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Unfortunately, Evan wasn't there to the premiere of his own film. Oh, no, that's the second premiere. The second premiere. Okay. Okay. I wasn't at the actual premiere. Then. Yeah. So the actual premiere was a year before that. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about this last one in December? Was that was that a good time? Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, I I was actually shooting a movie uh, with Eric Roberts. I was doing a, a role in another film called The Rideshare Killer, and so I I had done a twelve hour day, and then I went there to shoot the behind the scenes mm-hmm. stuff. You've been in a lot of stuff with Victoria Demar. Has what, has Victoria ever been in a? I don't think she's been in a Balsama movie. No, not yet. Uh, Victoria is great though. Oh yeah. Uh, it was funny because we had a sex scene in that rideshare killer, and we had a um, sex scene in Hanukkah. So she was like, "Oh, it's with James." Like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Because <laughs> I didn't know it was her until I showed up to set, and the same, she didn't know I was the guy that we were doing a scene together. So yeah. He was like, who am I doing a sex scene with? It's like, oh, it's James? Yeah, I've done that with it. Every time I see James, we have big sex. Yeah. <laughs> old hat. Yeah. 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 But yeah, she, and she's awesome in Hanukkah. Like, I think she really sells the uh, the horror of, in, in Hanukkah. Yeah, she's great. And she's a great musician also. I saw mm-hmm. her play at uh, some club in L.A., you know. Yeah, we played her music on the show a few times. Yeah, she's sweet. Yeah, I like that, Victoria. Yeah, I like her too. Where can people follow uh, Balsamo to see what's going on? Where you can get these movies? Oh yeah, uh, find me on Facebook. I'm James Balsamo. I'm gonna be your friend. Or go to Instagram at James Balsamo or Twitter at Acid Bath Product. Um, yeah, let's party. Check out my new movie, Catch the Day Two. Uh, hit stores everywhere on the ninth next month. Or you can watch my sexy movie, Sexy Time, on Vimeo right now. Sexy Time. Mm-hmm. Are you in that movie? I know. Yeah. It's, okay. Well, now I'm definitely going to be uh, checking it out. <laughs> I am. That, you put the sexy in the, in the Sexy Time, I think. I appreciate that. Yes. You're very welcome. By the way, uh, about like, because uh, you said it's coming out in stores too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> People talk all the time about the death of physical media and stuff. Uh, over the years, have you noticed uh, a change in um, video on demand towards uh, DVD, Blu-ray? Um, no, I mean, I, I think I, I've been pretty steady all these years. You know, I have a, a fan base, so it's nice they keep coming back for more. So for me, not so much. And, you know, I, I do the conventions, so which is going to change now. So I yeah. used to, uh, you know meet all the fans and go direct market. So now we'll see Joe Castro with no background. <laughs> hey, you know, he's very cool. Hey, hey James, how you doing over there? Great to see you, man. I like the smoke. 
Oh, thank you. Yes, we're into the oblivion. <laughs> uh, I, I have that. And I have a couple other things. Hey, Neil, how's it going? I'm Boy, good, thank you. It's very good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what, what's going on today? Uh, we're just talking about to... his movies and monsters that you're creating, and one of them uh, we can't talk about, apparently. But... We, oh, you mean the new one? The right. new one? It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's exactly. funny because I have, I have so much work right now. When James asked me to make this creature, <laughs> send me the pictures of it, I literally stopped everything and then just started working on this one. Because yeah. he, always, he, he's, he always allows me to create something that I've never created before. See, it's not, it's not like, like this. It's always something with a new twist or something truly original that's never been done before. Yeah. So, like did, so did James, did you have like a sketch of what you wanted? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, Actually, yeah I, uh, go ahead i was gonna say uh the stop animator uh, richard svensson i was looking for a monster uh, for for this project that i'm working on and then richard was like out of nowhere hey i don't know if you need a new monster but i made this thing a while ago and it's just kind of sitting around i haven't used anything and i was like i want it that's it joe's got to make the real life-sized one and that was it it was done yeah so uh, when, when James was talking about uh, the monster for uh, It Bleeds, or It Wants Blood, I'm sorry. Blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it Bleeds, too, though. <laughs> it Bleeds, yeah, that's that's work, but... <laughs> <laughs> they work together. It Bleeds, and then It Wants Blood. Well, yeah. it, ble <laughs> it Bleeds is the sequel to It Wants Blood. <laughs> <laughs> so when he was saying, like, he, want, uh, he was telling us he wanted something like an elephant, and then he was like, so do you remember that whole, like, conversation of how the monster became, you know, what it is? Well, I, 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 I was invited into the, uh, the creation of this thing kind of after the fact that James had brainstormed with the artists that designed it with James. And so when it came to me, it was already drawn and, and already kind of conceived. And he's like, can we accomplish this? You know, and I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not going to say no. Of course I would say yes. Uh, you, know, uh, the, you know, I think I think most people when they come to work with me understand that I can't say no to a challenge. I can't say no to something that's never been done before. Yeah. 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 Uh, you kind of answered this, but it's, it does seem like that's part of the fun is creating something that you either haven't done or figuring out, you know, what you're going to do or. Yeah. Th this new one has so much intricate. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give anything away about it, uh, but, but I will hype it up. It, it has so much intricate detail all over it that, um, you know, that, 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 I mean, even, even, even sculpting it was not going to accomplish what James has already conceived in his head. So I had to even think outside of that box in order to make it happen. Oh, wow. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Where do you keep the monster for it once blood? Cause it looks very large. Oh, I have it. It's in my place. It's on my wall. Yeah. My bedroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at it every night. Joe's beautiful art. <laughs> well, where are you at now? I'm in the living room. Oh, you're in the living room. Oh, okay. You have it in the bedroom over your bed. Yeah. Looking down at you. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how is the stuff for, uh, I know you probably have already covered this, but uh, you, so you started shooting uh, uh, catch, not catch of the day, uh, uh, the uh, bite school two today. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, that's like my favorite movie of yours. The original yeah. bite school is like my favorite James Paul Samuel movie. <laughs> so I, like, I begged him to please let me be in the sequel. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you're hired, Joe. Uh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Very good. What, what, what is it about bite school that makes it your favorite? It's just made with so much love. And there's like so much going on in every second of the movie. Um, you know, I, I mean, one of James' strongest points is he is, he, he is not afraid to entertain the audience every second of the film. You know, there's no fluff in his movies. He tries not to have anything that isn't funny, you know. And so, you know, I, I, and that film I could tell was made with a lot of love and, and care. And he did, you know, there's just something, there's, there's a little something for everybody in there, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't care what, what your sexuality is, what your religion is, what, what you like. There's a little something for everybody in there. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 So sweet, Joe. So, how long had you, had you guys known each other, James and uh, Joe? Since AFM, hey, we met yeah. AFM yeah. two years ago. Yeah, two years yeah. ago. Oh, so it hasn't been really that long. Mm. No, but since then we've been working together pretty frequently. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Troy, what, Troy, go, I was gonna say. No, you go on. I talked to Troy here. Troy, what, what, uh, what, uh, 
what, 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 what is it? Have you worked in been in any James's movies? Just one, just the yeah. one. Uh, Neil and I both in the in the one film. Cool as hell too. Yeah, cool as hell too. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. I haven't seen oh, that one. Okay. Yet. I just saw uh, the other one. Uh, no, wait, I did see Cool as Hell too. That's the one you sent me the link to, right? Catch with the, the, the girl, the, no, Catch of the Day too. Yeah. Catch of the Day too. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. 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 I watched uh, it earlier today. Could, uh, uh, I want to? I, I want to see an entire James Balsamo movie with nothing but his puns. <laughs> just, like literally, it's just like <laughs> one after just nothing but his best puns. Like like ninety minutes of. That would just, be pretty just, sweet. Like, I would like that yeah. too. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, you, know, you got to make like the crazy monsters and the puns, though. That's absolutely. the only thing. <laughs> no, absolutely, like, like that's what um, I just did this movie called uh, what the hell's the name of that? <laughs> Exorcism at sixty thousand feet, and that's nice. what it's supposed to be—just pun after pun after pun. And yeah. um, I think that um, uh, I think that James would be really good at directing something like that, and I would so be on board for one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, maybe that could be a pizza delivery guy. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, seriously. I wouldn't think it would take much encouragement for James to make a, an all pun film. <laughs> <laughs> an all pun film. Yeah. Yeah. My bucket, Joe. yeah, yeah. You got bugs. And when, when I was uh, in February, when we were at Mad Monster, I, I heard nonstop puns because we were right next to each other. Our booths. Yeah. Yeah, I never can get enough of that. My favorite. <laughs> my, I, I, I was watching uh, Catch of the Day too. And uh, my favorite part of the film is when James is trying to take down this bad guy in a, in a convenience store, but he has to stop and make a pun with a big phallic <laughs> egg, eggplant, I think it is, yes, and yeah. two coconuts. Yeah. He just said, like, yeah. right in the middle of this, he stop, pun, and then move forward. Yeah, no, I think it was some kind of root, thing. isn't it? It's like yucca root or something. Yeah, big yucca root and two <laughs> yeah. coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's love. That's, that's, yeah. that's, you know, the only crime a filmmaker can make is make us sit and watch a movie that's boring. And James's mm -hmm. films are not boring, you know? That's true. I mean, I get a lot of uh, screeners for the show and, uh, you know, even if it's well made and acted and all this stuff, that's like right. if you could tell, like there's no like uh love or like they weren't having a good time or trying to do something different. Like to me, that's like the most boring movie to watch. Dialogue alone is not entertainment. I'm just putting it out there for all those directors <laughs> like to hear themselves talk. Dialogue, dialogue alone is not entertaining. And I have, you know, there's a lot of people that think just because people are speaking that it's entertainment and it's not, mm -hmm. you know, we get that free all the time online. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't wanna> <laughs> right. I could just so, go on Facebook. Right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, first scene, like with the, when you have, uh, when you have the coconuts and, and the, I think it's a yucca root, I'm not sure. Uh, is that written out or is you just happen to see that and like, hey, I'm going to do yeah, this. How does that come about, James? Yeah. yeah, the coconuts, that, that was an ad lib. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got this convenience store location and uh, I was like, all right, what do we got? You know, that's what the celery joke, you know. <laughs> Maybe, uh... And, and J James himself is a is a is a is a special effects connoisseur himself. He's he's a special effects artist, so that's no, why nowhere near like Joe. I mean that's, that's why like, we're so you know Brothers. I'm talking to Bob Ross, you know, like <laughs> le, 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 there's a called special effect brothers, Siamese twin brothers, basically, you know, uh, and uh, that's why, yeah, I have this strange bond with other directors and producers and writers and entertainers that dabble or that have, you know, gone all the way into the bowl of plaster and gotten latex in the hair on the back of their arms. We have a special bond with each other. We understand each other and we can communicate in a way that no, the, the regular layman cannot communicate with each right. other. <laughs> That's the badge of courage. The, That's uh, right, the right plaster there. on there. <laughs> yeah, Your bowl, just, latex yeah, yeah, this fur yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pulling latex out of the, ba the back of the hair on your arm. <laughs> but, right, it's, yeah. like, it's like it's, it's like in Jaws when they're comparing all the scars. You guys, right, exactly. It's like moves. you know when you cut each, when you cut the the palm of the hand, you put the blood together <laughs> like that. You know, yeah. uh, James kind of was the same idea earlier because he said like he thought that's why he likes to work with you so much on the effects is because you're also a movie maker or filmmaker. I I understand. Um, I understand what it means to work and communicate and collaborate with another director and to be able to go into their mind, see what they need and produce it without having to put my own spin on it. See, a lot of artists, they, 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 they find this importance to like, 
okay, look, let me show you out. Let me show you how great I am. But that's not what the real big picture is. The big picture is here is to go into James's mind, find out exactly what he needs and produce it in the real world so I can put it in front of his camera. And a lot of artists don't don't understand that concept or haven't gotten to a point where they can just yeah, be able to Joe's delegate brilliant. authority to do that. You know, mm-hmm. Joe is brilliant about that. You know, what I mean, he's great at communication and knows exactly what you want because he's made so many films. You know, Joe's an incredible filmmaker. He really understands cinema. You know what I mean? Yeah. And creatures. You know, he 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 goes into the movement. How's this thing going to move? And he really brings life into those. Rubber monsters. Oh, it's very sweet of you to say. Yeah. You know, I, I, and, and you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I, I, I never prided myself on being like this amazing director, but I can be an amazing director of special effects for the directors I work for, if they allow me to do my best work. You know, a, a lot of a lot of other directors I work with. In fact, I'll be honest with you. Some of my best work ever has just never. It's never going to be seen. For two reasons. One is because the director did not delegate authority to me when it came to shooting the shot and they chose their own thing. And two, some of the directors that I've worked for and some of them we know, uh, they are at a point in their career where my effects actually upstage, the, upstage their direction. And so they literally don't photograph it correctly on purpose. That's so bizarre, but I've encountered that's, it. Yeah, that's so wrong. I've counted it over and over again. Like, I, I mean, even on some of the biggest things I've worked on, you know, wow. and it, it almost seems like the higher I go, the more that that is a problem on set, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, why, 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 why put all this work into like James right. understands he needs a certain quality of detail when I'm making the creatures. They're on his movie posters. You know, they're the real icing in some of the scenes that he's working on. He understands how to photograph that detail and use it uh, as an exploitation of what he's doing. And that's exactly what his fan base wants. Now, when I'm working with these other directors, they, 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 they think that their dialogue is like the shit, you know, and no one's watching their, their film because of the dialogue. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, you watch a monster movie for the monster. For the monster. I'm yeah. like, is, you know, so I, I, I used to say, is, is, you know, they come to me, I need to make a monster. Okay, is this monster going to be on the box cover or is it going to be on the back? Right. <laughs> is it going to be on the square of the back? It's going to be on the box cover. Oh, okay, then you want it to be really important. Yeah, it should be important. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that hard to deal with, though? If you, you, you put, because you seem obviously very passionate about your monsters and stuff, and then if you would make something and then it's not lit right or it's just not presented yeah. right. Yeah, it's a very disappointing. And uh, most of the time, we you don't know until it's the damage has already been done. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, there are times when I've actually been able to put my foot down professionally in front of the cast and crew and the producers on set and we were able to shoot exactly what needed to be shot. And then we get it. And that's happened on one or two occasions. And I was happy, but most of the time, you know, I'm not behind the camera or, 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 or I, I'm, I'm operating the thing. I try not to actually operate my effects. I like to be behind the camera so I can see what the director is seeing. So that way I make sure that they get exactly what they needed. You know, sometimes they don't know what they're missing because they don't really know the whole gamut of what they can get. Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure that, uh, that I'm behind the camera so I can see if there's a mistake made or, hey, you didn't really get the money shot of what I thought you could get. And uh, that's my real job. My real job is to be a director of special effects for the directors I work for. Mm-hmm. Someday I would like to be killed by Joe Castro. <laughs> Great. That's one of my really goals. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James, oh, I, 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 I remember shooting uh, It Wants Blood and, you yeah. know, we had like, I don't know, 15 minutes to shoot the last big weird thing. And yeah. I just went, I think I just went over to your, I think I put like spray 77 adhesive yeah, on the back of the appliance. Yeah. Going, this is going to be a Band-Aid. Here we go. <laughs> and I just went right on James's face oh, and no. I said, okay, where does it look bad? And I just stuck some blood on the round of it and I went, okay. Fly, that's all we got. Let's go. Uh, you know. and, then, and then, you know, like when things like that happen, just just so everyone knows I'm here to be of service in post. I mean, I, I if you let me, I will come in and I will clean up any flaws in my effects. Practically, I can clean them up digitally, which most practical effects artists cannot do. They don't know how to do that. But I do do that. That's exactly what I do. You know, so I'll come in and I'll, be, I'll baby all that for you guys. And I love doing that. I mean, I love doing that for you guys i mean y'all are my family it's like yeah. y'all are my film family i because 
by making James and other directors look amazing, I, and I'm and then because I'm a part of it, then I then I also look amazing. I mean, how else how else would you not want to live that way or be yeah. that way in the industry? You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm working for look amazing. You know, are you are you working on anything uh, right now? I know it's hard to work on something currently, but. Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> I actually have more work right now than I've ever had in my entire Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I'm working on nine features right now. That's why I was like, I was like, I, I was like, I told asking James, when do you need this by? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Drop your name. <day>, let's go. <laughs> so uh, I'm working on a, TV, a Netflix TV show, and then I'm working on oh, nice. uh, eight, 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 other, wow. eight, other, eight other projects at the moment. Um, you know, I'm still uh, finishing up the, the climax uh, demon creation for uh, the sequel to The Barn 2. Uh, oh, cool. I'm working on a, uh, a movie that's going to be shot in South Texas about a Mexican folklore uh, witch demon. Um, and then, um, yeah, uh, James's film. I have, uh, we have Terror Tunes 4 coming up this year. We're nice. continuing it this year, and I would like all of y'all to be in it. Uh, the mo the movie's yeah. already like 80% uh, shot. Wow. So we, we just, I just, I'm just, I just want all my friends to be in the final climax to kill a uh, portion <laughs> of the film and have everybody be part of the Terror Tunes franchise for the one big to die. Yeah, that's going to happen this year. And a couple of others that uh, I'm not allowed to talk about, but yeah. Exciting. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, how about just, uh, you know, Terror Tunes? You had the fourth one, like this has been with you for so long. Like uh, how special is that to then work on the fourth movie, you know? You know, we shot Terror Tunes 3, 4, and so was, but there was going to be a part five, but I combined a portion of part four into part three. So we didn't have three films. We just, we just had two. And, um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. You know, this has been with me for a long time. I'm very proud of the work and I have this amazing film family because of it. I'm still like literally best friends with the people that were involved in the very first one. And I've been able to bring some of them, if not most of them along for each of the films and everybody from the original cast with, a few exceptions wow. because one person has died and then one person is just, uh, you know, it's going to be in the, in the fourth one. So everybody will be in the, in the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It's cool. special. I rented the first one from Blockbuster. You did? I oh, really? Yeah. I, you know, when it came out, I was so, I was so proud of that. On the back of the box, it says, if you like, if you like Nightmare on Elm Street, I think Friday Thirteenth, and I can list a bunch of then you will love Terror Tunes. That's what because Blockbuster made up their own little thing, and so they gave you recommendations. And when I saw that, I said to, to the video store owner, "I mean, I was like a kid then. I mean, this twenty years ago. I was like, can I, can I keep this box? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have it over there. The oh, okay, Blockbuster. I was going to ask because they let you yeah. keep it. So that's yeah, cool. I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome. Special, special time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's pretty wild too. You rented the movie, James, and uh, you know, then you get to work with them, you know, later on in life. Great yeah. how that works. Yeah. My but. nephew, basically my film nephew, basically. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been a fan of Joe's work for a long time. So we we, we well, did you tell him we, we shot some of it once blood in the backyard. We did, uh, yeah. Back back here in the backyard. See, my partner Steven Escobar and I have a house in uh, Van Nuys and James came over with a we had a, like a real tight crew and we shot just a whole bunch of crazy gory stuff in the backyard. I was like <laughs> pulling out all the rubber parts. She's like, you have a dead baby? Bring it over here. <laughs> How much blood you got in that? Bring out that five gallon bucket. Here. She like hands me this big container. So I'm like, use this. I'm like, I'm like, do you have, do you have two of these shirts? Just ruin it. <laughs> you know, I, was, I think I even I, I brought I think I even put some top ramen and some oatmeal and some of it, and it was it was good. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, Basically, I have a ba I have a backyard. You can make a mess in it. Come over and make a mess in the backyard. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got a water assume... hose. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, I assume there's just like monster heads and and, and <laughs> body parts just all over Joe Castro's place. Yeah, there's a there's a wall in the in the studio where. I just like, well, if you want to go over there and look, you can you know, yeah. <laughs> lift stuff up and whatnot. Every once in a while, every once in a while, some rodent from the outside will get in and he'll, they'll get into like a foam body part piece that has like oh, no. hair syrup still left on it. And you can tell where the rats like chewed away at it. And it's all like a big rat <laughs> out of a torso or something. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's like a fast It's so cool. I love it. Oh. <laughs> love it. 
but, but, but covered with a fine layer of dust and plaster residue over everything. You know, because uh-huh. it's yeah. an all, all big special effects shop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rough though making movies by my, or making special effects by myself in the studio. I like it when James and people come over to play because you know I work out there and like, like right now it's super hot in LA and I'm working all this stuff. I, I actually get up at like one in the afternoon now and then I work till like six in the morning because it's cooler in the in the evening. Wow. So I got there to work. Mm-hmm. So I'm almost done with the with the with the, uh, the creature. I've literally have been working on it nonstop. James. Wow, that's oh, very cool. no, so, it was so fast. It's incredible. He, he he finished the it wants blood monster in a week. Yeah, like about a week, right? Yeah, I'm like, I got one week, this giant sculpture. Really? Because I, you know, I've seen the the pictures and it's very big and detailed, Huge. and that yeah. seems insane. Yeah, yeah, a human head fits inside of the mouth. When I came to Joe, that was the that was that the clip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said it's got to fit a human head inside of the mouth. <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, the, the, but and the new one is it's like I said, it's it was just when I saw it, I was like, wow, I've never made anything like that before. Yeah, he knows how to hook me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's gonna be a fun creature movie. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward. To it. And uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about the movie, but Joe Castor did uh, do uh, uh, the mask and then and, and a movie that I made in December. So, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, I can't wait for everybody to see. That. Actually, I have a shirt. With the mask on it, I do too. Yeah. I haven't worn it yet. Have, yeah, well, yeah, but I haven't worn it out in public yet because I'm waiting. Uh-huh. You know, but, uh, yeah, that's probably my favorite kind of like killer whatever. That's my favorite yeah. thing I I made at the time. It was like you know, and and what and just you guys know whenever y'all have me make something, like each thing I make, I try to make it the best thing that I've done. I never go backwards. I mean, I never, I never yeah. like. Put less effort into something because mm-hmm. you know I just want everything to keep going forward. You know, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I think you're going to be blown away by this this one here because it's like I said, it has so much detail all over. When I saw, it, I was like, "Wow, look at all that fucking detail! How are you, gonna, <laughs> like, you can't even sculpt that detail." Wait, uh, who, wait, who's the guy that made it? Who made the the, the stop motion thing? Yeah, Richard Svensson is his name. The lone is, is he local? Guy. Is he local? Sweden. He's in Sweden. He's in Sweden. Yeah. Wow, because that's some. I was actually going to call him on the phone. Yeah. To, to figure out how to reach. I need to reach him. But I want to know what he. I mean, I have my own technique to make that detail sure. full scale. We did it, but and I know that's a major model. I kind of wanted to know what he'd use to do that with because okay. that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's no Joe Castro, but he's. he's <laughs> no, nah, he's good. He's good. Who, who now? Who designed it though? Him, Richard, Richard. Oh, he just, oh, that thing is he's amazing. Yeah. This thing is so yeah, much I, fun. What I was saying is, I, I, so much fun. I was looking for a monster, and he said, "Hey, I made this thing a while ago. I didn't use oh. it for anything. Uh, do you want it?" And I said, "Yeah, I want do it. Do I want it?" <laughs> right. That thing is and that's amazing. When I called you up. I said, "Joe, make this thing. I need it. I need to hold it. It's so that, that, and, and just know, like, like that kind. Of, that's the kind of like stuffed animal toy that I would love to have. Yeah. Like it's sitting on my desk, but the thing I made, James, it's a one of a kind. There's no mold, like literally, there's no mold for it. It's a one of a kind. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, you gotta figure out the toy, Joe. We need to the toy version of it. That, that would be something yeah. to, to market. Yeah, yeah. So. I'll, put, I'll put it up on the bookshelf here. Oh yeah, you're gonna want that. Thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. It's it's cool. So yeah. yeah. Very cool. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to uh, to all to all the movies and and all the cool monsters. Yeah good stuff well gentlemen so, i'm going to go make dinner all right you guys be good james thank I'll you talk for to you in a couple of thank days. you for Neil, calling I in love joe. you i yeah, love you too i uh, love you uh, troy we'll see you some more soon all right yeah be, i don't be know good to yourself, gentlemen. I, think, I think he might have lost connection here or something but yeah. okay all right take care guys see you, see you on the other side of this pandemic yes bye bye, bye. all right well that was very fun james it was thank great you. having you on Always a pleasure. Yeah, we'll do this again. Sounds good. Honestly, no, I think I think you're going to be on something next week with, or in a couple of weeks uh, with yeah. us too. Uh, the B documentary too. Uh, 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 Q and A. It's like a whole bunch of people. You, Kevin oh, Van okay. Henten, Rick, and a bunch of cool people. Yeah, you know he's in Catch the Day. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Kevin Van Henten, Rick. Yeah. He taught me the ancient art of stone carving. Did you take a class with him? 
Yeah, I, a few uh, for like uh, three years. Uh, I went up to uh, he he does this every year in the Catskills, uh-huh. and so I went up and I learned the ancient art of stone carving with uh-huh. Kevin Van Hentenrick. And I I should put it over here, but I have a um, oh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> the Lyle. Really? I carved the Lyle into a stone and brought it home, and it's in my flower bed. Wow. And I've been carving Frankenstein's monster on like a big boulder up in uh, up up in oh, the Catskills. That's cool. Yeah, and no one up there knows that he's you know was in basket case. They just think he's the local mason or whatever. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, which I it was int- uh, real quick. Uh, but it, um, when they did uh, when Joe Bob came back and he did um, basket case on uh, on Shutter. Mm-hmm. And he said, he said like all this stuff that I always say on the show when I talk about Kevin H- Van Hentenrick. And like, I thought that I was like, wow, that's a lot of stuff I say. And then like some other people told me like, Hey, he said the same stuff you always talk about. And then when uh, he emailed me, uh, Joe Bob Briggs and was, he actually used my video with Kevin for some of the research for, for, uh, for, sh- for, uh, oh, wow. for his, his intro to uh, the basket about, about what like Kevin was up to currently. And right. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then other people are like, "Well, he just ripped you off and didn't credit you." But I was like, "Oh, it's, it's all right. It was cool. To, it's cool to know that anyway." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. Kevin's awesome, and you're awesome too, James. Troy's back. You're awesome. You're all awesome, Troy. You're awesome. I just, I just had to let the dogs out. Yeah. So it was you who let the dogs out. It's true. You <laughs> caught me. Found, <laughs> you can't say that around James and not expect something here. Oh, uh, we do have another. Oh, I believe this is uh, Craig Lindberg. Hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? All is well. I'm good. I'm good. Is that right to jump in on this or is this? Yeah, we're just wrapping up, but do you have something uh, quick for James? No, I'm sorry. I just, you know, <laughs> like to see myself on TV. That's about it. <laughs> I love it. But uh, yeah, I actually have to get up early because I'm recording some stuff. So we're gonna wrap up, but uh, this has been a lot of fun. You can you can come call back in next week, Craig. All right, all right, I will. All right, I'm thank glad you. I'm glad you figured this out. It's a very fitting <laughs> ending. I love. <laughs> all right, so check out Catch of the Day too, James Balsamo's movie. You get that uh, on video on demand, and then the uh, the DVD is coming out in the ninth, I believe. Yes, that's right. I remember. Cool. Neil looked at see, the heavens to remember that. Right. And you could see multiple facial hair of James Balsamo. That's true. Clean beard, goatee. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at how many people on this video have beards. <laughs> I think it's beards only. We yeah, won't I let mean, you in. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, that's just the, that's the, everyone in the world today has a beard, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. You'll probably stand out if you don't have a beard. <laughs> Even most of the women so. now. <laughs> that's how I prefer them. Yep. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hang up. Okay. So I, I always feel guilty about this because, but to, to, to stop the recording and save it, I just have to hang up. So okay. I'm not just being rude and hanging up on everybody. You're not just being to a jerk. Up. All right. For All a right. change, he's just like I, I <laughs> I'm just like using that ex- Yeah, when I call Troy, he's like, "Why are you recording?" Hey, what do you think I'm about like, this? Oh, Click. I gotta go, man. I gotta. <laughs> I, gotta I gotta save you. it quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Say what? Bye. All right, see you guys. It was a great show. Yeah, I had a great time. Thanks, everybody, thanks. and thanks for listening. You're watching. You're both. All right, thank you. This was weird watching. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. <laughs>